Today is Thursday, February the 28th. We are now live with the latest in the crypto world. It's 9.30 a.m. in New York City, 2.30 p.m. in London, 11.30 p.m. in Tokyo, and 3.30 p.m. here in Malta. The total market capitalization dropped by approximately $3 billion yesterday. The decline was followed by a recovery and the recent support level of $130 billion was reclaimed. The 15-minute chart of the cryptocurrency index, CCI30, shows the most recent clip. The index moved below the 2,200 point line briefly, but the support level has been recovered. The index stands 2% in the green year to date. February has been bullish for the top 30 cryptocurrencies and the index is up by 16% month to date. The 30-day quality was slightly lower yesterday, but it remains close to the 3% mark. Trading activity has increased following yesterday's decline and the 24-hour traded volume indicator is approaching the $28 billion level. The Bitcoin dominance indicator has remained virtually unchanged in these relatively stable markets as it edged slightly above the 52% level. The top five digital assets show mixed performance. Bitcoin briefly slipped below the $3,800 level yesterday, but it has since stabilized above the $3,850 zone. Ether dropped towards the $130 level, but the altcoin king has rebounded as the 24-hour traded volume surged above the $4.5 billion mark. XRP has recently slipped below the $0.32 cent level. EOS has been climbing up to test the resistance around the $3.60 zone. Litecoin posts a slight daily gain as it trades at more than $45 once again. The Coin360 heatmap indicates that no single sentiment is driving the markets and there is a mix of both green and red. According to the Token Spread website, the Exmo exchange has the biggest bid and ask difference for the Bitcoin dollar pair and it is slightly more than one tenth of a percent. The BitMEX and Exmo exchange post the biggest intermarket spread of nearly 4%. Reports show that nearly a billion US dollars were stolen from cryptocurrency exchanges last year. These security tokens have boosted the development of decentralized exchanges. To date, we will take a look at some of the characteristics of 0x, the exchange layer for the crypto eco economy. Sorry. This free and open source infrastructure enables wallet to wallet trading of tokens. It works on the Ethereum blockchain and its native token is ZRX. It has two functions, as a governance tool and it is also used for fees. The digital asset hits cryptocurrency exchanges priced at slightly more than 10 cents in mid-2017 to peak at nearly $2.40 in early 2018. The token has been trading south of the 30 cent mark during most of this year. We will now review the performance of the various cryptocurrency asset classes. We use the data from the Mesorai website, which groups cryptocurrencies in five major categories. The infrastructure group is virtually unchanged, with a slight decline as its assets show a mixed performance. The media and entertainment category is the most bearish asset class, and it is down by more than 2%. The Decentraland's MANA token is the top bearish driver, with a decline of nearly 10%. The financial sector is the only group that stands in the green, but the rise measures at less than 1%. The currency category is approximately 1% in the negative territory. Bitcoin and Litecoin are the two bullish factors. And lastly, the service section posts a decline of nearly 1%. This comes as Storage and Revain both are sharply lower. This is where the five major cryptocurrency categories stand so far on this Thursday. We will now focus on the most significant moves among the top 100 cryptocurrencies to identify the top gainers and biggest decliners. We'll start with the, with the gainers. The overall market is trading sideways, but there are some significant increases among the cryptocurrencies. The ABBC lead the gainers section for the second day in a row. It is up by 77% over the past 24 hours, and the coin has broken through the 25 cent level. The Nexo token has resumed uptrend after dropping earlier in the week. The altcoin trades at close to 8.2 cents on a double digit increase. This week has been bullish for the Ravencoin. The asset gained a total of nearly 50% as it approaches the 15 cent level on a high daily traded volume of $20 million. The Steam coin has been on the rise after dropping towards the 50 cent zone earlier in the week. The cryptocurrency currently stands at 38 cents on a daily gain of 8%. 
The Aurora token continues its volatile performance and the digital asset is up by nearly 7%. Now we'll move on to the decliners. There are no double digit declines today. The Decentraland's MANA token surged yesterday on the HTC partnership announcement, after which most of those gains fizzled out, becoming the top decliner. The altcoin has had a volatile week. The most recent decline of nearly 8% puts the price of the asset at 55 cents. The Revain token has been on a bearish trajectory and it is down by approximately 6%. The seven day chart shows a bumpy ride for the Bitcoin SV and it is down by 5% as it failed to hold the ground above the $70 level. The Crypto.com to token has been trading lower throughout the week and it is settling near the $2.60 mark on a decline of more than 5%. These were the top 24 hour moves during the European morning trading session this Thursday. We will now join our cryptocurrency experts, Jason Fernandez, who is the COO and co-founder of AE Token, and Jeff Hancock, who is the co-founder and COO of GetFIFO. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi, Leo. Hi, very good. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I think we'll just jump straight in. So, Jeff, if you'd like to answer this one first. Markets have calmed down during the recent days. Experts speak of concerns over, over stagnation and then about volatility. So what is better for the crypto market? A steady and gradual upward trend or a quick and steep increase? What do you think, Jeff? Well, personally, I think it's definitely a steady increase, seeing some nice gains with a little bit of cooling off in between. Um, the market that we saw in kind of the 2017, uh, early 2018, um, when everyone was going to the moon and buying Lambos, um, it, it, it brought a very uneducated investor into the mix. And now I think if we can get a nice steady, you know, steady increase and steady returns and, you know, more mature money returning to the market, uh, I think it'll create a very legitimate, very healthy market. Oh, and Jason, where do you stand on this? Yeah, I agree uh, on, on that. I mean, I think uh, Bitcoin is undervalued right now. So I think uh, when it does go up, it would be in a legitimate direction. Uh, the theory of why a steady and gradual upward trend may be better is that uh, such a rise will be based on better fundamentals and not just like fear of missing out from retail investors that typically tend to be slightly biased. Um, and but the fact is that once all this blocks start for falling into place, vis-a-vis like -vis, uh, institutional investors, ETFs, uh, backed, etc., uh, that's really going to be a signal for a lot of other parties to get in, and that would likely drive the price up pretty rapidly anyway. So even if it started off slow and steady, I'd expect it to have to have an exponential curve pretty soon over time. Okay, excellent. I can see Jeff is agreeing with you there. And for a second year in a row, Bitcoin has surpassed PayPal in yearly transaction volume. In 2018, Bitcoin posted $1.3 trillion and PayPal nearly $580 billion. So what can we take from this information? What do you think, Jeff? Um, I think it just comes down to people maturing into the market and finding it as a good means of transferring value and payments. I mean, Bitcoin is not the fastest way to transfer value with crypto. It's probably one of the slowest. But I think it's just people educating on the fees. I mean, just trying to use PayPal between your family members, it's somewhere between 2 and 4%, uh, regardless if you're in the same country, the same currency. And um, maybe the, the whole decentralized versus centralized argument is that uh, they can stop your account from being used, even if it's for completely legitimate purposes, and people are just kind of getting over it. Mm -mm. And Jason? Right, so I think... Uh, uh, I think it's a clear sign that Bitcoin is a force to be reckoned with in the payments industry. Uh, I mean, people have been skeptical about Bitcoin for years as a payment as a payment method. It's just been out there slowly trudging away and increasing its numbers. Um, the next frontier, I think, would be transactions per second. Uh, right now, Bitcoin can't really compete with Visa, PayPal uh, with transaction speeds. But assuming Bitcoin scaling solutions like Lightning Network can bring up the, those speeds to where they're comparable, uh, that would really signal uh, Bitcoin's breaking out you know, as, a, as a very standard payment method. Sure, I see. And developers at Bitcoin's Lightning Labs have apparently come up with a code that they believe will be key to helping BTC reach a mainstream audience. So can news of this sort help drive up the price of a cryptocurrency? Jeff, what do you think? Um, if you look at pure supply and demand metrics, I mean, we're at 17 million tokens now. We've got another halving coming up, you know, relatively soon. Um, and there's only going to be a fixed amount. So there's going to be a time when you can't own 
a whole Bitcoin because it's just simply not available or simply not um, affordable. Then you've got the decimal point, so you can own anything from a dollar to 50 cents worth of Bitcoin. But for an investor that wants to kind of get in and, and you know, um, uh, and get a good value on their returns or a good return on their investment, I should say, just like um, uh, we were saying earlier, I mean, it's, uh, it's incredibly undervalued at the moment. So with, you know, the price, the improvements they're making, Lightning Network, um, that's it's only good things for you know the biggest brand in the market, which is which is Bitcoin. And if it's good for Bitcoin, it's usually good for everything else. Sure. And Jason, what do you think news of this sort will do? What's your prediction? So I mean, I think the the improvement that, that we're really talking about is that the code change will allow uh, users to send payments uh, to to made to static addresses. So right now, uh, with Lightning, uh, users and merchants accept payments via invoices. And the main drawback between that for that is that an invoice can only be used once. So if a user were to accept a second payment on that address, that payment could be stolen. Uh, so and, and that might work in, in many conditions, but it doesn't when it's when you start talking about things like tips and things that where uh, money would would be likely sent without requiring an invoice. So games uh, and in some cases where people don't necessarily need all the details on an invoice in order to send send money out. So basically, one person can send money to another without them actually having to expect it or actually having to send out an invoice uh, in advance. So um, that's kind of the improvement. And, and sure, it, you know, ultimately that re that removes some friction. So that's certainly going to um, uh, make a lot make transactions a lot more painless. Will it increase the price in the short term? Um, I don't think so because I think retail investors tend not to be very technical or really concerned about how the code works, um, they may only want sit up once they see, actually see uh, increased transaction volume uh, and, and increased price. But I wouldn't make a direct comparison between uh, this improvement and any particular bump that Bitcoin might get. Okay, sure. Well, thank you for clarifying that there. And in Argentina and Venezuela, Bitcoin trading volume is surging and did so throughout the crypto winter. Can it be said that economic crisis spur wider use of cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin? Jeff, what do you think? I mean, it's kind of a rough time going down there from what we do know and what we can read about it. I mean, they're going through, you know, insane hyperinflation and, you know, other political, other political um, uh, restrictions. And, you know, it's just, it's just tough over there, right? Um, People not be able to feed themselves. People not be able to transact, run businesses, buy bread, you know, get fuel, that kind of stuff. Um, if the transaction volume continues to pick up, and you know, some form of value is derived from that, you know, that that allows parts of the world to start supplying aid, you know, start supplying um, some sort of contribution or some sort of um, uh, charity to kind of help the, help these people out. And um, uh, whether it's hopefully stays with Bitcoin, not their their own controlled currency. Um, let's hope it kind of stays that way and. Um, hopefully it can help us get to some sort of resolution as well. And Jason, what do you think in terms of um, economic crisis, cryptocurrencies, what do you think is going to happen? Right. Well, I mean, as we've certainly seen that uh, when there's an economic crisis uh, in a lot of these countries, uh, people tend to um, look towards Bitcoin. But I certainly wouldn't say that we should hope that uh, economic crises occur more often in order to have wider use of cryptocurrencies. But I mean, there, there's clearly reasons for this. So one is that uh, Bitcoin, you know, crypto, a lot of cryptocurrencies aren't controlled by a central authority. So in countries where people are distrustful about how central banks and governments uh, manage the money, uh, manage the economy, uh, Bitcoin might seem like a more sensible alternative. Um, another advantage that Bitcoin has is that it may be easier to obtain than other fiat currencies. So when the uh, when the local currency is crashing, it may not be so easy to go out and and purchase like U.S. dollars or more or more stable currency. I where you can't purchase Bitcoin in many cases, um, especially because Bitcoin can be bought and sold uh, via Bitcoin exchanges online and also through indirect transactions via sites like you know local bitcoins, etc. Um, but and and we saw that even when in the when the Greek crisis unfolded, uh, Bitcoin exchanges reported you know a bump in volume of people you know trading the cryptocurrency around the world. And I guess the lion's share of that increase came from from Greece. So um, so we have seen that happen. But I think the big, the price of Bitcoin has been extremely volatile, though. Uh, and, and I'm not really sure that um, uh, people should really start considering it a safe haven, per se. It might be safer than some of these economies that are, you know, in extremely dire straits. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't really call it a, a safe harbor, per se. Um, Venezuela, since you mentioned it is, is, is a really interesting example, because they've had, you know, inflation go from eight, something like 
eighty thousand percent, which we you know is ridiculously high in December to something like 140,000%. So, um, and that has obviously spurred um, massive adoption with cryptocurrencies. But on the other hand, um, government is also getting in on it. So Venezuela passed some crypto regulations, which uh, ensure that, you know, firms dealing in crypto have to essentially pay back tax also in crypto. So it, it's sort of a, 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 a situation where the government is essentially, uh, the government in Venezuela is essentially using uh, crypto funds to perpetuate itself, which is sort of an odd situation given, uh, um, you know, given Bitcoin's sort of democratic principles, uh, you know. But but that that's how it's worked in, in Venezuela. But certainly around the world, um, it has really helped for countries that have, you know, major economic crises for them to look at Bitcoin. Mm, definitely Sorry. something. Yeah, go on that. Jeff, definitely. That, um, the, the banks, you know, some people can't get a bank account without an access to a bank account, or in these kind of times of, you know, crises and you know, urgency, that people can transact mobile to mobile because there's always a 3G signal or at least a 2G signal in which you can transact. And that's kind of been kind of a saving grace. But like you say, it's not supposed to be a safe haven. But when people are hodling US dollars over crypto, I mean, there's something kind of fundamentally wrong there. Absolutely. Something definitely to keep an eye on. It's incredibly interesting at the moment. And now Bitcoin SV seems to have lost against Bitcoin Cash and is struggling to enter the top 10. So experts believe that in spite of a bullish sign for the coin, the team behind Satoshi's vision need to prove themselves before they can gain true momentum again. So can you comment on this, Jeff? Um, sort of. I mean, on, on our exchange specifically, we were supporting Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and then the thought came along. Uh, and we took the position not to support uh, the SV vision until it had, like you say, proved itself. Um, just with the idea of you know, taking already a forked coin and forking it again. Um, but Bitcoin has been forked something like, I mean, you probably know this better, um, Jason, but it's like 80 times or something like that. How many times has Bitcoin been forked? A lot. Yeah, something like that. And I just didn't see, we didn't feel that there was enough value in another token uh, promoting to be, you know, the true original vision. Um, and a lot of people lost a lot of money betting the wrong way, whether it was miners committing their hash rate, uh, people moving away from you know, traditional Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, this other chain. Um, and it just had, I don't think it's got the adoption that they, that they thought they would. And maybe it was their marketing just going after, you know, in a very vindictive way of their right, everyone else is wrong. And whether we have to prove ourselves or not is kind of, you know what I mean? I don't think they came to market with a, with a solid strategy to get what they wanted. Sure. And Jason, where do you stand on this? Do you agree, disagree? What else do you have to add? Yeah. So I get the I get I get the point uh, about how uh, Bitcoin really Bitcoin SV really has to prove itself before um, before breaking out. But I think something that's uh, something that's ranked eleventh. We're still it's almost in the top ten. I mean we're quibbling here, but it's it's ranked eleventh right now. And any cryptocurrency that's ranked eleventh probably deserves at least a second look. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's a it, it, it's it's a fair cryptocurrency to to look at. I mean, uh, yeah, sure they need to, they they need to, they have a ways to go, but um, these recent the, the recent moves. I mean, really, if you think about it, on the twenty sixth, Bitcoin surged some twenty percent. So, and that was based off of you know really basic news uh, that a Lithuanian based tech, fintech firm CoinGate uh, has enabled trading and payments uh, for Bitcoin SV, but. Uh, and, and, so, and sure, in a sense, that's corrected a little bit. But I would say they're very, very much in the running uh, to be a top 10 crypto. I, I mean, and Bitcoin Cash is at six right now. So we're looking at 11 and six. These aren't really huge. We've seen numbers go back and forth. You know, we've seen coins go down. We've seen other coins go up. Um, an interesting point is that uh, big Bitcoin maximalist Kevin Pham, he was a, a really big proponent of Bitcoin. He's recently moved from promoting uh, Bitcoin and, and to Bitcoin SV. And, and sort of that has... I think uh, had some degree of influence on, on you know, in a retail market with um, with uh, basically unsophisticated investors. Uh, people like Kevin Pham have a lot of sway in, and so that may have had some 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 benefit towards it. But yeah, I mean, I think that they're they're they're, they're fighting pretty hard to be in the top ten, and I think I don't think I wouldn't call it, count them out yet. Okay, yeah. sure. Something to keep an eye on then, definitely. Now, some analysts claim Bitcoin is gaining pace and could revisit the $4,200 resistance level in the short term. What could be the indication of gaining pace? And do you believe this could be a sign previous to an upward swing? Jeff? Well, we saw that uh, last week, a week ago. We breached 4000 and then pretty significantly fell back through it again. 
Um, what was the market reason for this? I mean, who really knows? Who's got the crystal ball with all of the, you know, all the private keys? Um, I think it, it's only going to be a matter of time before we get up and I think we're going to keep bashing against that level for a little while, whether it's going to be another few weeks, another month or so. It's a very big psychological level and it's a very big resistance level if you go back and look at the historical charts. Um, but I think once we test it enough and breach it, but not in a really severe way, but in a, you know, taking profits as we go kind of, kind of momentum, uh, I pretty much think we'll stay above it for the rest of the year, but it needs to be a you know a consistent clean break, not just a big sudden to the moon. Jason, what are your thoughts on this? Agree, disagree? Where do you stand? So I think I think you know we, we breached four thousand and then basically backslid down to about thirty seven. I mean right now it's, it's hovering around thirty eight hundred, mm. but basically the thirty seven sixty level was a strong level of support. And I think that uh, now it could possibly move. I mean, we've, we've seen reports that some of the biggest wallets, uh, some of the biggest holders of Bitcoin wallets in terms of volume, in terms of amount of money, uh, you know, in those wallets uh, has actually increased their holdings of Bitcoin. And so that indicates that people are basically stop it, stocking up when those prices drop even at that. So that, you know, that that indicates a strong support level, uh, at least at, you know, 3,800, 3,700. But I think that we could... We could reach 4,000 and then move on up to even particularly maybe even 4,200 uh, in the near uh, in the near future, perhaps in the next couple of weeks. Because I certainly think there are strong, you know, I think that there are strong fundamentals. Uh, and, and I think when you look at a lot of the whales and the fact that the whales are really, um, uh, you know, shoring up their, their holdings, I think that that should be a, um, a signal to other people that, you know, this is a way to go perhaps. Mm. Okay, sure. And just finally, we understand how sensitive it is to recommend any investments, of course. But if you were to mention the most solid cryptocurrency projects, which would they be, Jeff? The most solid projects is a very good choice of words. Um, I suppose anything outside the, the top 20 or top 50, you really need to take a speculative look at. Um, I think any, any inside the top 10 that has really good daily traded volume, if you're a trader, um, other ones to kind of kind of stick to. Anything outside of that, you are you know punting massively. Um, but yeah, as I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. Uh, quite bullish on Ethereum. Uh, moving to proof of stake over the longer term, I think is great. Um, stuff inside of the, um, the the Neo ecosystem, so Neo ontology, those kind of things are um, they make up part of my stack. And then some of the other ones uh, that are kind of my second tier ones, are stuff like um, Cardano and um, Alastos, that kind of stuff is, is obviously a big, and obviously Bitcoin as well. If you can own one or two Bitcoin for like your entire life as your pension, then you know that that, that that's a really good plan. Jeff, thank you. And Jason, what are your thoughts? What would you recommend? So I would certainly say that, uh, that 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 Bitcoin is is definitely one of those things that you you know should definitely own. Uh, but in terms of altcoins, um, uh, I would really start looking at uh, development. And I think there's a lot of been there's been a lot of strong development. Uh, Tron and EOS has seen a lot of development. EOS has actually seen you know quite a bit of development, uh, sort of comparable and um, uh, closely closely. Um, uh, mirroring eth Ethereum's development. But overall, I think also Ripple is really interesting. I'm not suggesting somebody goes out and buys them, but I think Ripple uh, would be a really good um, cryptocurrency to look at in the future, especially in the light of JP Morgan coin and all these massive banks that are, that are coming into the game, looking at moving money around. And it'd be really interesting to see what how that works at Ripple and how Ripple basically handles that and whether they're able to uh, set up either an adversarial relationship with these banks that's working in their favor or a cooperative relationship that's actually, you know, bearing fruit. I think that's – you're going to see a lot of consolidation in this in this area, I think, over the next couple of years. And I think I'm really interested to see how Ripple handles that. That would be a real test. Yeah. Absolutely. Lots to keep our eyes open for. Jeff, Jason, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, having you both on the line with us today. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Now, before we sign off, I have a last-minute update from our editorial staff regarding the crypto market. The overall market has continued trading sideways. The total market capitalization is extremely stable and it has been hovering slightly above the $130 billion mark during most of the day. The 24-hour traded volume remains at an elevated level of nearly $28 billion. The ABBC coin has held on to its recent gains and it is up by more than 100% to post the biggest daily gains. 
Well, that is all for this Thursday's Crypto Now Live. We thank Jason Fernandez of AE Token and Jeff Hancock of Get FIFO for their expert analysis. We thank the audience for joining us and invite you all to accompany us every weekday at the same time.